Free energy from centrifugal force explained. Consider a heavy mass moving in free space. A load is applied. The load is directly opposite the direction of motion of the mass. Two things will happen. One, the mass will have an equally opposite reaction to the load, meaning the mass will pull on the load. Two, the mass will slow down. Now consider this special case. A load is applied 90 degrees to the direction of motion, direction of motion of the weight. Two things will happen. The mass will have an equally opposite reaction to the load, meaning that the mass will pull on the load. Two, the mass will change direction. Notice that the weight, notice that the mass did not slow down. It only changed direction. Of course, our machines are imperfect, so there is always a small amount of force from the load on the weight, but it is kept as small as possible. Here's one of my designs. The weight is removed. You can see where it's supposed to be. This machine is far too small to be of any practical use. So let's look at some other designs. That's that same photo. You can see that there's an off-center shaft here. Okay, this is a different video. That's okay. Go back to that one. You find the Okay. Just trying to find the right point. So I speed it up and now you can see it's pulling on the crank, which would be the output. Every time it goes around it sort of pulses but it doesn't really slow it down, but it does do some work. Okay, let's go back to this one. Uh, same machine, basically. Okay, let's look at this one. So these all have the same concept. It's a, it's an off-center shaft so that the weight wants to be on, it wants to have the biggest circumference possible. It doesn't want to go towards the center. So the load pulls it in towards the center. So this big brown pulley is the output. So you see how it's pulsing. Again, the, the uh, offset here was only about three eighths of an inch. So these machines were way too small to be of any practical use. Gravity, motor, gravity motors versus centrifugal force multipliers. My research has concluded that almost all the extra energy from a gravity motor actually comes from centrifugal force. Gravity acts like a spring, so it helps the gravity motors to be self-running. Self but you see, it's not necessary 
A centrifugal force multiplier is much simpler to build and less dangerous. A centrifugal force multiplier that weighs thousands of pounds can be built very easily and cheaply. I recommend starting with a diameter of at least 12 feet and two weights of 500 pounds or more. So here I have a concept where you have two buckets that swing and the bucket weighs at least 500 pounds, preferably a thousand pounds. Um, so if you had this spinning at 30 RPM to a thousand pound buckets, 12 foot diameter, uh, 12 inch uh, output diameter down here, the red one, uh, you might get up to 11 horsepower and you probably take maybe 3 horsepower to run it or maybe a little less. Okay, so the input mechanism, input is a mechanism which rotates the buckets. The red wheel is the output. So the, the buckets have cables on them and that's attached to the wheel and if you hold that red wheel they'll sort of wind in and they don't want to so they pull back out. Uh, so the red wheel has bearings on the black shaft so that's like the center axle uh, and it could be stationary and you could put a bearing on the top for the pole. Um, this mechanism could be started by hand and should, pr should produce several horsepower while putting minimal load on the input motor. The cables on the red output wheel can be moved in or out from the center for optimal performance. 12 inches in diameter is a good starting distance. More buckets can be added. It can be modified to act like a vertical windmill which will help it rotate easier. So instead of having uh, windage or wind drag, the wind could actually help move it. Or it might, if it was windy enough and you built it right, uh, the wind could actually keep it running.